Danny Schechter, the news dissector, that's what I'm called, here back on Wall Street at the Liberty Park. Uh, I guess it's day five of the, of the uh, Wall Street protests. I've been in Europe, I've been in, actually in Turkey. Uh, so I've come back and one of the things that people there asked, what are you guys doing about the financial crisis in America? Are you standing up? Are you protesting this? And there are people, of course, protesting it. I started um, marching on Wall Street back in 2007, 2008. We were warning people of what was to come and nobody was paying too much attention. Now, finally, we're paying attention, but 14 million people have lost their homes. Millions of people have lost their jobs and nobody has gone to jail. None of the bankers have been prosecuted, indicted, uh, as they had been after the SNL crisis, where 1,500 bankers went to jail in America. So you can see that this administration is not prosecuting uh, wrongdoers, is not prosecuting the people that profited from this crisis and helped create the crisis. So what I'm trying to do is promote my film, Plunder, The Crime of Our Time, which is a movie about the financial crisis as a crime story, not as a business problem. And I'm also uh, going on other media and writing on other media. I have an article up on aljazeera.net uh, today about uh, the debt crisis and why people bother to even listen to politicians who really don't know anything about what, what's going on and tend to be wrong most of the time. So I'm a blogger, I'm an author, I've written a book, The Crime of Our Time. I'm a filmmaker and I'm a troublemaker like you, trying to raise awareness about these issues, trying to take it to the streets. And as you can see here in New York, the police are very good at penning people off, of trying to, uh, in a sense, keep the protest moving uh, and keep it as invisible as possible. And that's the, the challenge folks have, try to get the word out. They're doing it in social media, but it's not getting the mainstream or lamestream media it deserves. And I wanted to come down and see it for myself and see if I can be helpful in some way in getting this message out because, you know, we're talking about crime. We're talking about the Federal Reserve Bank uh, spending our money, but a private corporation printing money, basically. We're talking about Wall Street firms, finance uh, institutions, working with real estate companies, working with insurance companies like AIG, and creating you know, one of the worst financial disasters in history. You know, folks, we're in a depression. They don't want to use the D word, but that's what it is. People are out of work. Young people don't have jobs when they get out of school. It's a disaster. It's a catastrophe. And the question is, are we going to just sit by and assume that the people who are supposed to know know, or are we going to take action? And one way to take action, hopefully, is to educate yourself, arm yourself with information. You can find my film at plunderthecrimeofourtime.com, and I blog every day on newsdissector.com, where I write about these issues and try, uh, as a journalist, to uh, raise awareness about the issue. What's the view of people in, in Europe um, or uh, about the United States where people don't really seem to be stepping up? Uh, there's a very small uh, contingent on the left, as, re as is represented here. Uh, the Tea Party stepped up somewhat, but then was very quickly co-opted by the establishment uh, Republicans. Iceland seems to be the only country that, that has stepped up and stopped the bankers. So what's the view in Europe? Well, you know, Europe is in the midst of a financial crisis. It took a little time to go from here to there, but it's there in full force. It's like financial AIDS. You know, AIDS starts in one place and it spreads like a pandemic. And this is what's happened with this financial crisis. So Greece uh, is about to go down. Uh, it could default on its loans. It owes a whole lot of money. It's cutting jobs. People are in the streets. They're angry about it. Uh, many other countries in Europe are practicing what they call austerity, which means cutting everything, cutting uh, programs for working class and poor people. And this isn't really working because things are getting worse, not better. So the people in power really don't have an answer to this crisis. They don't know how to deal with it. They don't want to really help the poorest people. They want to help the bankers get their money back. And they're willing to use the bailouts and all kinds of techniques. And I say, we don't need a bailout, we need a jail out. We need to jail the people responsible for this. And that will only happen if enough people begin to find out what's really going on. And that's what my hope is. 
you know, when I was in Turkey, Turkey is booming, financially booming. The country is growing. It's an economic, you know, economically doing very well. But even in countries like Israel, 400,000 people went into the streets to protest uh, economic decisions there. So this is spreading movement, you know, behind uh, Tahrir Square in Egypt, behind the protests in Tunisia, was economic issues and economic issues are the issues we have to address. So here we are, you know, in a little park, kind of pushed into the park, not able to really be in the streets, not able to protest in front of the stock exchange or any symbolic buildings, uh, you know. And this is the game that is played to try to weaken social movements when we need to make them stronger. Do you feel that right now we're experiencing austerity here in the United States, or especially in New York, where they're raising tolls, they're, they're uh, rolling out, because the city is broke, because of the derivative scam, they're rolling out um, the ticket squads to ticket the middle class. I mean, isn't this all austerity in some form? Of course it is. And, you know, inflation is really cutting into what money we do have. You know, next door to me is a dollar store, one of those bargain stores. Well, guess what? Everything starts at $1.39 and goes up now. So there's been, you know, a tremendous increase, and this is being passed on to all of us. Things are costing more. They will cost more. And this crisis is going to get deeper. It's not getting any better. There's no recovery underway. And this is something that uh, people have to recognize and, and be willing to do something about. And that's the real challenge here, cutting uh, benefit programs for poor people, slashing Social Security and Medicare is not going to solve this problem. The Republicans are completely wrong about their approach, but the Democrats are wrong too, because they're not taking on the financial institutions. They're not uh, challenging the Federal Reserve. They're not doing what they should be doing. And so, in a way, we're beyond partisan politics on this. Is partisan politics, Democrats versus Republicans, not working? What will work? That's what we have to create. What's Danny Schechter's solution? What do you think will work? Well, I mean, look, we have, we have a government which has been appropriated. You know, people say, well, the government shouldn't spend money. The government, But the government spends money on, on the people the government likes. They don't spend money on the, on the rest of us. Clearly, we need to take it from the greedy and give it uh, to the needy in some way. Now, they say, well, that's class politics, but there is a class war going on. It's just the ruling class, the rich class is, is winning the war. Poor class isn't. So I don't, I don't presume to know all the solutions. There are people who are a lot smarter than me who've come up with all kinds of ideas that are just rejected out of hand. Uh, and this is the problem. It's clear what's going on now is not working. It's clear that the people in charge don't know what to do. And it's clear that unless we make more noise, and you can hear the noise here, uh, we're not going to get anywhere. So that's the challenge we have. And out of this, out of social movements come change. Civil rights movement, change. Anti-war movement, change. And this movement uh, has to grow and has to become more powerful. Will it? I don't know. It's a tough sell for a lot of people because people are, fr are frightened. They're panicking. They're nervous. They're anxious. They can't sleep. They don't know what to do themselves. And they can, how can they pay their bills? Can they keep their kids in college? I mean, this is very basic stuff that gets right down to the way we live. It's not abstract. It's not intellectual. It's real. And the question is, are we going to get real and try to deal with this and realize that our interests and the interests of the people that run these big banks down here are not the same? That's the Thank you very much for joining us, Danny. Always a pleasure.